Supplemental Math Videos from Circle Christian School. The Law of Signs. From navigation to the area of a triangle that just aren't right triangles. Hmm. That doesn't sound right. I bet I need an editor. The Law of Signs and Cosines are Pythagoras at his best. Okay, here's our first sign. Um, just a handy piece from uh, the book here. Nice thing to have in your notebook. Uh, just remembering that when using the law of signs, it's side A over the angle A, side B over the angle B equals side C over the angle C. And this just kind of helps you to figure out what you're set at allows the unknown variable to be in the numerator. I'm going to work a few that we didn't do in class here. So this is kind of a single solution case in SSA where we have a side, a side, and an angle. And um, the best thing to do is to actually just start with labeling different things. So we know we have an angle A that equals 42 degrees a side B that equals 12 inches, and a side A that equals the 22 inches. Okay, so what we're looking for is the um, missing side of C here. And then eventually with that, we can go find our missing angles. Okay, I'm going to start with actually angles, finding an angle first. And so let's go find angle B. And since what we want to do is put the missing unknown guy up in the numerator, let's set up over that way. And we have uh, angle A here. So side B is 12 and side A is 22. And we get our handy dandy little calculator out. Let me see. I forgot the 42 up here. 42 degrees. Okay. And let's get our handy dandy little calculator out. Make sure it's in degree. And we'll work the problem. Using our cross multiplying here, we find that angle B equals approximately 21.41 degrees. Okay, so that helps us be able to find some things out about our other sides. Now, the whole reason why this happens, again, is that a squared equals b squared equals c squared thing, um, and that we have this direct relationship from angle to the opposite side. It has a proportional relationship, and that's why we're able to... Uh, set these things up the way that we set them up using the law of sines and the law of cosines. Again, that was just Pythagoras to his best. That gives us all the angles now, just minusing everything from 180, and we get 116.59 degrees for angle C. Now we can find the remaining side here by C over cosine C, my bad, sine C. That's the next video. Anyway, uh, let's see, sine C equals, and you can pick either what's going on with A or what's with B. Uh, so I'm just going to pick A just because it's in the book that way, but you can try B, see if it comes up the same. Make yourself another problem here and gives you another whittle and another five points. So, again, doing our cross multiplying by putting our values in, we find that C, side C is approximately 29.40. This is um, the one before this is a no solution case. I'll let you just look at that in the book. It's pretty self-explanatory all on its own. And we're going to work a two-solution case where basically what we have is a 
scaling triangle and part of it's being cut out but basically in a funny little way I'm going to take you back to geometry there's a bit of the hinge theorem happening here where we have two congruent sides but a connecting angle that is different so it kind of gives us two answers in a possibility here so there's that hinge theorem and if you need a little bit of help with the hinge theorem ask any of the geometry kids they're working on it right now all right the other thing that you have to know about some of these uh, SSA triangles is that H equals the height of the triangle because if we have the height of the triangle we have a base we have a height we can go find area so the height here equals side B sine angle A all right best thing to do is just go label things we have a side A equals 12 meters for both triangles we have a side B that equals 31 meters for both triangles and we have a angle A which equals 20.5 degrees for both triangles all right because we have that cool thing that says the height equals side B sine A we actually can find H here by taking our side B which is 31 and multiplying it to the sine 20.5 which gives us approximately 10.86 meters now what's assumed here is that we don't exactly have a drawing of the triangle uh, we're just given information and because the height here equals what it does we end up with the height being in between um, side A and side B here okay so H is less than side A and then less than side B so that says hey we possibly could actually have two triangles here because our height for the triangles would be here and that's why it's possible to actually have two triangles okay so um, I'm going to set up the first one which is going to be sine B over B and sine A over side A and doing the cross multiplying thing you find that you get the 31 sine 20.5 degrees over our 12 and that gives you approximately 0.90 uh, was it 47 47 all right now here's the deal what we're trying to find is um, the angle inside here and uh, the angle of uh, B so if you just do the inverse anytime you're looking for an angle it's that arc sign and put in the point 9047 that's where you get the possible angle here of 64.8 okay I'm going to actually erase things so I can have some room but I'm going to keep the fact that uh, we have uh, angle B1 at 64.8 okay so angle B1 equals the 64.8 okay so basically this triangle with the dotted line here um, I wish this thing had a highlighter or a pointer but it does not but this triangle right here is an isosceles triangle 
which means this angle outside here and see this would be the 64.8 here because that's properties of an isosceles triangle is going to be 180 minus the 64.8 so angle B2 is going to equal the 115.2 degrees okay so for the triangle that has angle B1 in it we can now find angle C which would be 180 minus the 20.5 minus the 64.8 which is just going to give us 94.7 okay so up here three four just to keep things wonderfully confusing is 94.7 degrees cool and all that now that we have this will allow us to go find site C and then we can find some things like area but because we have this possibility of two triangles here we're also going to have to find angle C so uh, this can be C1 and this will be C2 by doing 180 minus the 250 I'm sorry 20.5 minus the 115.2 which is going to give us 44.3 sorry that looks like a 49 and it's not it's a 44 maybe that looks a little more like a 44 and now we can find, and this is going to be side C1, and this would be side C2. And then we can do all those good things, find um, what our third side is by using the law of signs. This is a nice time to tell you how much I just detest the technology of computers because this is the fourth time I've done this screen because uh, the program itself is just being wacky okay so um, area for an oblique triangle can be used uh, using the law of signs sometimes you got to do a little bit of uh, law of signs work to find some angles or to find some sides but the area is pretty basic it's just one half two of the sides and then a third angle all of them being a B and C they're pretty easy to memorize because it's just the other letters when dealing with them so in this case since we have an a and a B we're just going to go one half the 52 one half the 90 and then we're just going to multiply all that by sine C which is 102 degrees which gives us an area of a triangle which is approximately using your calculator 2288 point something oh 87 meters squared and that's how you find the area